Episode 317, Bull Armory. As we dive into a firearms episode, we're going to talk about an Israeli company that's doing elite weaponry in pistols, mostly 1911 frames, sometimes confused with the 2011. We'll explain the difference. Is there even a difference? And a little bit more about this company. All right, hold on. My uh, computer is hiccuping. So I have to find out where I would left off. All right, so I left off for you. I'll explain the difference. Just follow me on this one, okay? So we'll explain the difference of 2011 versus 1911. Is there a difference? Some people say yes, some people say no, but we'll discuss it. All right, it's a privately held company. It means it's not in the stock market. You can't buy shares. And they're headquartered, headquartered out of Tel Aviv, Israel. You know, it, I, is that, can I say Israel three times in a sentence? I think I might get in trouble. Founded in 1990, 34 years ago, its platform is pistols. Now, we've discussed the difference between 1911. They copy their pistols, the 1911 frame. So if you've ever shot in a Glock, and I am a Glock boy because I grew up Glock, my agency believed in Glock. We swore by Glock. We ate Glock. We swallowed Glock. We slept with Glock. We enjoyed Glock. We had the plastic gun with us when it was a plastic gun, and we kept it all the way until it became a hell of a gun, the Glock. But the Glock is not a bull armory. It's also not a taco. We'll talk about that one in a minute. The price tag is not budgetary. The price tag is a little large, but not impossible to reach, especially if you like guns. It has three uses that you can use this gun for. Defensive carry, right? To save your life, life of others. Can you use it for that? Will it work for that? Is it dependable and reliable? The answer is yes. Duty carry, it could be your everyday carry. A little bit of a uh, bulky, doesn't weigh a lot. In fact, one of the models we're gonna talk about is called the Ultra Light. And it's also for sports shooting, very accurate. So it's got all the bells and whistles. It can be used for a variety of shooter. But on this show, I usually talk about defending your life with it. So, is this a thing? Is this gun a thing? Well, it is and it isn't. The platform is kind of a thing. But the gun isn't a thing. So you're probably wondering, what's the difference? Well, it's not a thing. People think it's a thing, but it hasn't been a thing yet. And it might not be a thing. All right, all right. I'll cut it out and I'll explain in a minute. So compared to the clock, the SIG, the m and it's not a budget gun, as we talked about. Are these guns reliable that I just spoke of? Of course, Glock is the Toyota of pistols. It is quite reliable and probably for a range of about five to six hundred dollars, you can own one. But there's other things that are a little bit not the same in what we're going to dive into. SIG does an excellent weapon. And the 365, XL, X, you know, they, they come up with different 
models of the 365, the P365. It is an excellent weapon, probably seven, eight, and somewhere in that range, $100. And the M&P, the one I had, well, you're not gonna get it for 50 bucks, but you probably can get it between three and $400, and they've got different M&P models. Shooting in nine millimeter, you can shoot it in 40, 45, and everything else. These guns are compact, small, subcompact, so nine millimeter works just fine. The caliber nine millimeter has improved incredibly uh, as of probably 10 years with technology. They can compress those cartridges and make it a bigger punch. So you really don't need those 40s or 45 or 10 millimeters and they're gonna make your hand, man, is that thing gonna sting on those small little compacts. So why do we compare the Bull Armory to which gun? Well, the big dog in the 2011 model. And that would be Staccato. Company came out of Texas, and uh, I believe it used to be uh, uh, STI or something like that, or it used to be called. But now they came up with this pretty cool name, Staccato, and it's the elite of elite guns. It's the butter of guns. It shoots like butter. It's excellent. In fact, it's so excellent that 1,200, that's 1200, 0, 0, 1,200 police agencies have started using the staccato. 1,200. Now, this weapon is not cheap. Do you, I think they've gone down in price, but let's just say, for the sake of argument, because you might want full size, or compact size, and of course that would change the price. But let's just say it's in the average of around 3,200 bucks. That's about right. Now you can probably get a little better deal or you can pay a little bit more, but we're, we're, we're gonna leave it around there, 3,200 bucks. And some people might say, shit, that's a, that's a real good deal. They might be right. So a lot of SWAT teams are using the Sataco, which is good. It is a reliable gun. It's on a 2011 platform. I've talked a lot about this 2011 versus the 1911. Well, the 1911 came out a long time ago. 1911. And that frame is the primary shooting frame of every pistol. Yeah, some don't have the exact same frame, of course, because it would make it a 1911. But pistol manufacturers want to resemble the 1911 frame as best they can. The difference between a 1911 and a 2011 is the magazine, the single stack magazine, such as this one, it's small, it's skinny, the double stack. So the single stack, that means that the rounds are one on top of the other inside this magazine. The double stack, they're side by side, making it thicker and the 1911s come in single stack and the 2011s double stack. Well, that was a rule of thumb. A lot of people would, there's other little small little variations like the price. If it was really expensive, like three, four or $5,000, uh, we're gonna put you in the 2011 category. But there are some 1911s that are quite expensive as well. 
So the magazine rule might have been a rule, but I don't think it's a rule no more. Because you see, Bull Armory, they, uh, they break rules. This Israeli company is modeling their pistols as a 1911 frame. Do you say 2011 and they look at you crazy? They have not copied a 2011 frame. They have copied a 1911 frame double stack. So that throws out that definition that the difference between 2011 and 1911 is single versus double stack. Out the window. So bull armory we're going to take a dive. I'm going to talk about two models. And I might have talked about one. I can't remember if I did the podcast or not. I'm up to 316 already. But I, I know I talked on this specific model I'm going to talk about first. The Axe Tomahawk. It's about $750. It's known as the Glock Killer. You see, they did this weapon. When I say they, you're probably wondering who they are. You've been looking for they for many years. Well, in this sentence, they is Bull Armory. They took this. Let me just go to their website a second here. They took the... Glock model, and they basically made it into this Tomahawk. It comes in compact and it comes in full size. Of course, the difference would be full size, probably five inches or so in the um, barrel, the muzzle, and the compact probably in short of four inches or four inches around there. So when you look at the models, here it is the, and I'm, I'm looking at it on my tablet here. It's the um, X Compact Tomahawk manufacturer's retail price. Well, you know what that means. You probably can get it a little bit cheaper, but we're gonna tell you a little secret about that. You might not get it cheaper. Anyway, manufacturer retail price, suggested retail price is $750. It's a nine millimeter and it is resembles a Glock. Can you see it? Are we looking at it? No, you're looking at gibberish. Okay, so it kind of resembles a Glock. Um, except it's not a plain Glock. See, Glocks are very plain. Their sights, those that are Glock boys and girls, they know what I'm talking about. The sights are plain, the trigger's mushy and plain. It's just a plain gun, just like a Toyota. Not very, too many frills, but man, that thing runs good. That's a Glock. Well, this, is more like a fancy Toyota. What's a fancy Toyota? Maybe a Lexus? See, for $750, there's so many good things with this. For example, let me just read you a couple of the items that they talk about. Has 15 round capacity in the magazine. It has a light trigger from uh, 3.5 to four pounds on the trigger. It has a high grip beaver tail. So you're having a lot of real estate right in the back of your hand here. Where am I at? Right back here. All right, let's get my, right. right back here. A lot of real estate, a lot of real estate you can hang on to. On, um, on this specific model. It has a trigger guard with a height 
double undercut. So right under this trigger area, it's really cut in there nice. So you can get your hand up in there. I did a the, the, the middle finger. You can get that middle finger way up in there. We run a clean show here. Right there. And uh, get a better grip. It um, has ambidextrous thumb rest on both sides. Flat face trigger shoe. And stainless steel guide rod some of these guide rods that glock uses sometimes <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah sometimes you got to switch them out they work they're good but you, you might have to switch them out and a whole lot of other stuff so what this is is a 750 dollar pistol that resembles a Glock, probably the big, the full frame of the Glock 17 and the compact, probably a Glock 19. And it's tricked out. So it has the optic ready on top, so you can put an optic on it. The magazine well down there is nice and wide, so you can get your magazine in. It has a cut there. So you can rip it out in case you have to. Trigger guard is very wide. You get hands in there with gloves if you need to. And it's got these ports for recoil cut in there. It is a very handsome, very pretty, very immaculate gun for $750. I highly recommend it, especially if you've shot in Glock before, because it is a pimped out Glock, and I'm sure you would like it. All right, so let's clip over to the other ones they have. Now, I approve, if you go to their website, I approve of everything that says Pro, Pro, okay? So they got the Ultra, that's one model. And they've got the Ultra Pro. I like the Pro. Okay? EDC and the EDC Pro. I like the Pro. Okay? TAC and the TAC Pro. I like the TAC Pro. So out of these three, the TAC and the EDC are mostly full-size duty weapons, I'll call them. They're very nice. Let's go to, um, let's start with the TAC Pro. I'm going to click on the, the big one, the TAC Pro. Suggested manu, remember I told you I'm going to give you a little secret about how they work their manufacturer's suggested retail price. Uh, the TAC Pro is $2,450 as of this podcast. Capacity is 20 rounds and one in the chamber, making it 21. Trigger is 3.2 pounds. It is 4.25 inches, and they also make another cut for five inches on that, uh, on that barrel. You get four magazines with the, with the weapon itself, and um, it runs like butter. They run flat. Okay. See the beaver tail back there? I mean, you can really get your hand in there, boy. That beaver tail. Right in the back. Okay. There, that's a better shot of it. You can get your hand really in there. That lower cut down there. And that beaver tail. Boy, a lot of real estate. So... This is probably the most expensive out of the ones I'm, I'm talking about. We'll cut down to the Ultra Pro, which is more for concealed carry. Now, can you carry uh, duty? Probably you could. Your barrel 
Let me see if I can, it's, uh, it's got a capacity of 16 rounds in the magazine, one in the chamber, making it 17. Your trigger weight is about three pounds or three and a half pounds. Beautiful numbers. Your barrel is 3.25, so it's for concealment. And it goes for 1950. That's not the year, that's the price tag, 1950. Runs like butter, you get three magazines with it, and it's a beautiful little gun. Let me see if I can click and make it a little bit bigger. Beautiful little gun. Again, if you're listening to me on the podcast, you can't see shit of what I'm showing because you haven't seen the video content on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and you look up Radar Cop Podcasts, and you look up this one, Bull Armory, you can see the pictures. That's how that works. So here's the question that we're gonna ask as we wrap this up. $2,000, let's give it a round bull number versus maybe $600. Should I go for it? Now this is an individual question that you have to ask yourself. There's no right or wrong answer, boys and girls. But I am a firm believer that if you don't have all the options, then you don't have all the answers. A budget gun is a good gun. An expensive gun is a good gun. One is probably more durable than the other. One of them is better built than the other. One of them may perform better than the other. But again, that's on shooter skill too. It's a hard call. If you're a gun collector, like most gun owners own thousands of holsters, some people own thousands of guns. Would it be far-fetched that they would have an elite gun like the Bull Armory in their armory? No. It's right up their alley, along with the inexpensive ones. But there's nothing like reliability. When I was in law enforcement in Miami-Dade, my armorer, which we're going to do his plug at the end of the show, Pistol Pete, kept me alive. But I knew that if I had to take out my weapon, engage the target, it was going to do what it was created to do. Reason number one, it was a Glock. Reason number two, it was serviced by Pistol Pete, the gunsmith. So could this one be better? Well. I would have a lot of uh, faith in it because it cost me a lot more. And I personally would probably take the dive. I might not take the dive on several of them, but I at least would try one. It is worth its weight in gold. You know, we spoke about Stataco and a lot of people, 1,200 agencies are signing up to them. They seem to be taking more and more of police departments. You know, it's like the old days where people would buy Dodge police cars, and then it was Ford, and then Chevys. Every once in a blue moon, somebody had a Chevy, and they go, what the hell is that? Right? And it was always competition. Well, in the police world, Glock has been the guy. It's been the guy since late, mid to late 80s, where it was known as the plastic gun that would melt in your holster. And every department had it, and everybody continues to use it. Yeah, there are other players in the game, I, I realize that. The Sotaco 
at around three thousand. But what do we say, thirty-two hundred dollars, maybe average? That's a lot of taxpayers' money there. But it's a good gun. So is Bull Armory becoming that gun for law enforcement? Not exactly. It is becoming introduced into law enforcement through the 1911 platform, not necessarily the gun manufacturer. That could be for a lot of reasons. Now, the little secret that I told you about, we'll close with this. I told you that you might not get too much off the manufacturer suggested retail price because Bull Armory doesn't use gun stores to sell their guns. So you can buy it directly from them and they'll send it to an FLL and you can pick it up. But they don't ship them out to stores. That keeps the price down. I like that. But here's the problem. They bring in the shipment from Israel. You blink twice, they're gone. So you got to get on an order. Got to do your thing, and you might have to wait your turn. But when that baby comes, it shoots like butter. I think it's a good deal. It's expensive, but it's reliable. And I also think it's a staccato killer. So, would I get one? Yes. Should you get one? personal question you have to answer. But I gave you two options. I gave you the Axe Tomahawk for 750. Tricked out Glock. Can't go wrong. Either one, I think, are good choices. But don't be shy in purchasing. I also believe in another thing. If you're a gun activist, and you believe strongly in the Second Amendment, you are carry, carrying consistently, I think that you should have the best weapon available to you. And I think that you should take annual training in different schools of thought and become more and more advanced. Just one class a year should be the minimum and should, be, should suffice. But wouldn't it be better to take the best one out of your arsenal to this gun training courses? I think so. Can't go wrong. Up next, episode 317, New Crisis Intervention. We're going to dive into that. Remember, I was a coordinator of crisis intervention for Miami-Dade. So I know all the hokey pokey nonsense that goes on with it. And I can tell you, this new concept, it's law enforcement and it's civilians. Will it work? We'll answer that question next week. As I said before, if you're looking for a good gunsmith, the best one I can recommend, look at this camera straight in the face, is Pistol Pete, the gunsmith down in Miami. His information is down in the bottom of the show notes. Give Pete a call. He will tell you how to ship your weapon to him legally. He'll make that weapon look like an elite weapon that we just talked about. You won't even recognize it when you get it back and it will always work above and beyond your expectations. Pistol Pete, the gunsmith, and he'll ship it right back and perfectly legal. So you don't have to live in Miami. Oh, it would be nice because you could shake Pete's hand and he's a great guy, but you can get it done. If you're up in the New Jersey area, you know that the uh, big secret is that our friends up there are carrying concealed weapons now. Yes, 30, 40 years later, our friends in New Jersey have joined the party. Late. Better than never, but they're there. Uh, Sepulvivia Inc., our friend, Kilo Sierra, Karras, his information is down the bottom of the show notes. 
and he 20 year or plus firearms instructor and he's on his game best training ever we had a video component with Karis recently and he, we talked about the concealed carry classes in New Jersey and uh, he was a forerunner on that so he's a leader in the industry that's my buddy right back there he's about to start complaining I'm too talking too loud he can't sleep so if you're on the video <clears throat> there he is right there so he's a cockapoo this dude right here he's a he's something else all right <clears throat> I'm dropping my mic but before I completely drop my mic I want to remind you of this continue to pray for yourself because without you we have nothing continue to pray for your community your family the law enforcement agencies that serve you and continue to pray for our beloved country the united states of america this is alpha mike and i'll see you downrange